Hello, dear students. I'm Miss Tania Poveda. This is Entrepreneurship 2. Welcome to my class. Remember to download the information into your computer so you can check it whenever you want. You can take notes or pause or rewind or watch this video whenever you need to. Just don't forget to download it so you can even print it. Okay, remember that we've been talking about this for a few weeks and it's about different ways to get information. When we're talking about different ways to get information from the market, we're talking about, yes, investigation techniques. We've been talking about this for a long time, so I'm sure that you remember the information. Well, again, it's very important we remember this. Use the most accurate technique according to the market. Each market is unique and different. So know your market first and choose the best one. It's very, very important that we remember that the markets, that you know it's a group of people with different characteristics, you recognize the market, you want to sell your product, and then use the correct, the correct technique to find out information. For example, if you have a group of people, let's say people, children, you have a product that you want to sell, not to children because it's not they who handle the money, but to their parents, but, but you need to know if the children like or not your product, if they're going to use it or not, for example, you cannot use a survey with children. First of all, because they are not going to focus on a set of questions. Probably their uh, reading comprehension is not going to be the same, not for the information you need. And also because they are not going to focus on the paper, they are going to focus on the toy. So you need to use other techniques according to the product. So let's say that if you want to sell a toy, probably you can give the toy to a group of children and ask them to use the toy and then you can have an interview with them, maybe. So how do you use this button? What do you want to do with the toy? And things like that. Maybe an interview, maybe, pay attention. It can be other technique, for example, observation that we're going to study later. Okay, so remember that it's very important. You recognize the market and the product, and according to that, you choose the investigation technique. We are going to study, and we are actually studying these investigation techniques. Service, that you know very well, set of questions. Interviews, face to face, you talk to people, you make questions or people make questions to you. Focus group, the one we're going to start today. Observation, maybe your market don't need to talk or can't talk, or you need to observe how they react. Well, we're going to talk about that later, but this is our investigation technique. Product testing and mystery shoppers. As I told you before, we're going to continue with focus group. So in the picture, you can see a group of people. Obviously, we're going to talk about a group of possible clients. In this case, this is a sample of the market. You already know what a sample is. It's a little group of people that represents the whole market. So this is the definition of focus group when we're talking about market research. It's a group of people who discuss a topic or product. That's simple. So we have a group of people, maybe six, eight, 10 people, and we have a discussion. In English, discuss discussion is something good. In Spanish, if you translate the word, the word exactly like it sounds, in Spanish, it's not good, but in English it is. To have a discussion with someone in English, it's something positive. It means you're having a conversation. 
to get to know each other or to get to know about the product or what they like or what they don't like. Okay, so it's something positive, remember that. Group of people who discuss a topic or product. Like I told you before, maybe you show the product to this little group of people and then you talk about that, making questions. Of course, you have a set of questions that I'm going to tell you how to write them later. Not today because it's too much, but let's start with this. So this is the third investigation technique we're studying, and this is focus group. So do you have any idea how it started? Well, I'm going to show you a video, enjoy it, and it's about how it started. Pay attention, it's going to be very, very useful for your professional life, because it's very important to know how things started. It's not only about memorizing definitions and just remember some information, but also where the information came from and some other extra information. So enjoy it. Why do we buy certain products or choose certain brands? This is the sort of question advertisers have always asked, and there are no easy answers. However, there is a handy tool that helps companies explore this and similar questions, and it's called the focus group. Until the 1940s, market research was often quantitative, using things like sales figures and customer polls to track consumption. But this changed during World War II. Sociologists Robert Merton and Paul Lazarsfeld set out to learn how unprecedented exposure to wartime propaganda was affecting the public. Instead of polling large numbers of people with straightforward questions and quantifiable answers, the researchers conducted in-person interviews, sometimes with small groups, engaging them in more open discussions. Later, this method was picked up by the advertising industry with the help of consultants like Austrian-born psychologist Ernest Dichter, who first coined the term focus group. This new technique was a type of qualitative research focused on the nature of people's preferences and thoughts. It couldn't tell marketers what percentage of people buy a certain product or brand, but it could tell them more about the people who do, their reasoning for doing so, and even the unconscious motivations behind those reasons. Rather than providing definite conclusions for business and sales, focus groups would be used for exploratory research generating new ideas for products and marketing based on deep deeper understanding of consumer habits. For example, early focus groups found that contrary to popular opinion at the time, wives often had more influence than their husbands when choosing which car to buy. So Chrysler shifted gears by marketing cars directly to women and Dr. Dichter himself conducted focus groups for Mattel to learn what girls wanted in a doll. The result was the original Barbie doll. So how does a focus group work? First, companies recruit between six and 10 participants according to specific criteria that meet their research objectives. They could be mothers of children between five and seven, or teenagers planning to buy a new phone in the next three months. This is often done through professional recruiters who manage lists of people who've agreed to participate in focus groups for payment or other rewards. During a session, participants are asked to respond to various prompts from the group moderator, like sharing their opinions on a certain product or their emotional reactions to an advertisement. They may even be asked to do seemingly unrelated tasks, like imagining brands as animals in a zoo the idea is that this can reveal useful information about the participants' feelings that traditional questions might not get to. Beyond these basics, many variations are possible. A focus group may have two or more moderators, perhaps taking opposite sides on a question. Or a researcher might be hidden in the focus group, unknown to other participants, to see how their answers can be influenced. And the whole process may also be observed by researchers through a one-way mirror. But although they can provide valuable insight, focus groups do have their limitations. And one of the main ones is that the simple act of observing something can change it. 
This principle is called observer interference. The answers participants give are likely to be affected by the presence of the researchers, social pressure from the rest of the group, or simply knowing that they're taking part in a focus group. And because researchers often use a small sample size in a specific setting, it's hard to generalize their results. The findings that researchers do reach from focus groups are often tested through experiments and data gathering. Those put numbers on questions like how many potential customers there are and what price they'd be willing to pay. This part of the process changes as technology evolves. But focus groups have remained largely the same for decades. Perhaps when it comes to the big important questions, there's no substitute for people genuinely interacting with each other. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video. It's really interesting to know how it started. Just in case, I'm going to make sure that you remember. This happened after 1940 with the Second World War, okay? When they want to investigate what people, how people react about propaganda. Yeah, propaganda is a word that you can use like that in English. So it's about feelings and about reactions. It's very important also we know that focus group is a qualitative investigation because it's not only a cold set of questions and numbers that you analyze, it's also something you use to analyze reactions, feelings from a specific group of people. And then you will know if they're going to be consumers or not, or if they can improve the product, make it better, or probably just reject the product, okay? It's also important to know that in that moment, you are going to have um, this group of people with similar characteristics, and maybe when you are in a group, you can get influenced by the public. But right now I'm going to explain some of the advantages and disadvantages of focus group. And here we have, let's just start with the positive side. Let's go to the left. Advantages when we use focus group to analyze a market. So it's very important to know that in this uh, kind of investigation, you can see facial expression and body language. Remember that sometimes you don't need to speak, but your face says a lot, says a lot. Like you can be quiet, but being with an expression like this, and immediately I can know, okay, something's happening to you. You are sad, you're mad, you're angry, something's going on. So you don't need to tell me, I can see it. It's the same when you are in an investigation, in this case, in focus group. We can hear social cues in language, in language expression. Okay, when we're talking about social clues, it's like um, we're talking about how you react in a social environment. So there are some things that you cannot find in a set of questions on a paper, but that you can that you can feel, you can tell in a group of people. It provides insights on the most appropriate way to talk about products, services, brands. As I told you before, this is a qualitative investigation, so it means it's really open to hear and to speak. So you can get information deeper. You can get um, much more deeper information because in that case, you can go into other questions. When you are, and next class, we're going to talk about how to handle, how to manage a focus group with a set of questions and everything. When we are talking about, when we are talking about um, these kind of things, you have your set of questions, but in front of the group, probably there is something happens or someone says something that you didn't expect it and you don't have a question ready, but that's why you have to be prepared to improvise questions after questions according to the reactions of your group, okay? So those are three of the advantages because for sure there are more that we have when using focus group. And now we have some disadvantages too. As we saw in the video, they already mentioned few disadvantages. Well, I'm going to read these five disadvantages. 
And this is a really big disadvantage. It's a small, non-representative sample. Do you remember, maybe in a statistics class, mathematics, or do you know what a sample is? It's a little piece of market that you consider according to the population, and you need a specific formula to get that number. So when we're talking about a market of millions of people, millions, and then we have a group of six, eight, or 10, that's not representative of those millions. That's why it's not that, that good. Results are not projectable. Projectable means that you can see into the future. You cannot, you cannot project information with this analyze because the investigation is about what's going on at that specific moment. That's why you cannot project. It's an artificial environment. When we say it's an artificial environment, means that people know they are in a focus group and they are going to be probably, they want it to be accepted and they are going to tell whatever you want to hear because they want to be nice to you. Or maybe they don't want to be criticized or they don't want to be pointed and people are afraid to tell the truth or so they're going to be like acting. Some people, some people will because it's, it's not a um, natural environment where you can speak the way you are when you can say the whatever you want and everybody's looking at your face. So probably some people feel a little bit shy about that and they are not going to say what they really think, but they're going to say what others want to hear. And this connects connect to the next one, lack of an anonymity. And that sounds similar in Spanish. Lack of anonymity means that everybody sees your face. Everybody sees everybody. So there is no way you can, you can make mistakes because everybody's going to be looking at you. And that sometimes make people react in a different way. Potentially based on results due group influence, as we saw in the video, that you can go back whenever you want. You do, did you see this group of women talking and then they have these hearts on their heads because they are like, they want to be accepted, they want to be like the others, so probably they influence to others. Because even when we're not talking about focus group, but when we're talking about groups of people, there's always like someone or a couple of people or maybe more that are a little bit more, um, usually that they lead the group. And the others follow the leader, usually for positive things and negative things. It, it happens too when we're talking about market analysis, when we're talking about a focus group. There's always one, two people with a stronger personality like, and the others maybe, okay, they accept and they move the same way. So that's why it's one of the disadvantages. And it's really important that we, that we have that we consider all these points when we're talking about a focus group, that people, some people can be really honest and tell you the truth and other people can maybe change a little bit what they think to be accepted or for any reason they have. And that's why it's very important you go to the left and remember that in a focus group, you can also consider facial expressions and body language because your mouth can say something but your face and your body it's really hard that you can you can hide that okay so that's it for today oh no sorry i forgot about this <laughs> so we have these four faces when we're talking about focus group so you have an opening warm up, main body, and closure. So when we have opening, when we're talking about opening, we're talking about icebreaker, 
like the first uh, sentences, expressions you use to break the ice in a group of people. You explain the purpose. You set the rules. You give instructions or introductions like it says here. Okay, warm up. It's like when you go, when you're going to do exercises, you have to warm up, to stretch and to move your body. It's the same here in focus group. So you start with relate experience, simulate group interaction. You see how people interact. I start with least threatening and simple, simplest questions. Okay, not too complicated, just easy questions. Main body. Move to more threatening or sensitive and complex questions. So you go to a different level. Elicit deep responses. Connect emergent data to complex, broad participation. So here's like the main, main thing of the, of the situation, the third stage. And finally, when you are about to finish, you go to closure. You finish this meeting, this focus group. You end maybe with some closure type questions like, okay, did, how do you feel? Did you enjoy it? Summarize and refine. Invite final comments or insights. And then you obviously thank people for their participation. It's very important you thank people because they feel important and they because they see that you're grateful and they are going probably be open to help next time. Okay? So that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention. It's very nice to be here with you. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye, everybody.